May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The return to redeemed to Zion. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom, like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the God and the majesty our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. He is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. The highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean should not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransoms of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing, everlasting joy be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and singing shall flee away. Hey, thanks for meeting with me. I'm super excited to tell you about our camping trip. We appreciate you inviting us, but... But what? But, well, you know, we've never really gone camping before. You haven't? Not, no, not camping per se. Well, that's okay. What have you done? Well, when I was a kid, my folks took me to the Dells once. Okay, well, that's a start. It was okay. We could have pizza delivered right to the water slides. That's cool. And, uh, what about you? What? Have you gone camping before? Um, I went outside once. You did? You went outside once? Yeah. I don't like it. Why not? The fresh air got on me. It what now? It got on me. I didn't like it. I don't like AC. She's like that. Well, there will be fresh air in the wilderness. Well, I don't like fresh air. I gathered that. So, do you have any questions about the trip? I do. Okay. What's the name of the resort we're staying at? We're not staying at a resort. We're camping. In the wilderness, we'll be staying in tents. Tents? Hmm. Does the staff put the tents up for us? You guys put the tents up, right? No, uh, we're not staying at a resort. You could say it's pretty intense. We're camping in the wilderness. We put up our own tents. Like with our hands? Yes, with our hands. I can show you how it's done. It's not hard. And room service? I suppose you're going to tell me there isn't any room service, I guess. No, uh, room service is out. We make our own food. Make? Right, make? May I ask, how?
how exactly that is entailed? We bring food with us and make it ourselves. And before you ask, no, there are no microwaves where we're going. We don't have extension cords that long. We cook over a campfire. A campfire? How primitive is this? Well, it is called wilderness camping. Wilderness? As in we only have 4G service? Ooh, that could be a deal breaker. I don't think you quite understand. We're going to be in the wilderness camping. There's no 4G or 5G. Uh, I'm going to pretend that you did not just say that to me. I don't think you quite understand. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to insult you, but it's the truth. There isn't any Wi-Fi or cell service where we're going. Then why bother going? This sounds less and less attractive the more you tell us about it. Look, wilderness camping is a chance to get away from our phones, computers, and devices. It's a chance to get back to nature. Beautiful nature. Just as God created it. You'll love being surrounded by the glories of creation, the mountains, the lakes and the rivers, the wildlife. Like wild animals? You mean lions? And tigers? And bears? Oh my! I don't want to be eaten alive. This does not sound fun to me. You won't be eaten alive. There are no lions or tigers. What about bears? There are bears. I'm bears, so I'm going to be eaten by bears. No, no you won't. They're just black bears. They won't hurt you. We probably won't even see them. I know I won't see them because I'm not going. No bear is going to make an entree out of me. Listen, the bears won't hurt you. You've got to be strong and not be afraid. This isn't some deadly jungle trek. It's a three-day camping trek. Three days, you say? What if we get lost? What if we wander off the road? Or highway? Or trail? Whatever it is that they have in this godforsaken place, and we get lost. Where the giant, man-eating grizzlies will get us. Black bears! Not grizzlies. You won't go astray and get lost. The trails are all marked and named. They're easy to follow. My favorite one is called the Holy Way. It takes you through beautiful fields filled with flowers and along a mountain stream. I'm allergic to flowers. Why does that not surprise me? You're not allergic to flowers. You buy them all the time. Those are from a florist. We're talking about wild, savage flowers here. No, we're not. They're just flowers. They're beautiful. Look, if we wanted to experience fields and mountains and rivers and streams, we could just do that from the safety of our living room. But that's the point. No, you can't. Watching something on a screen is not the same as being there, surrounded by it all. I'm still not so sure about this. If you really want to see the glory of God's creation, you have to be in it. That's where the magic happens. It will bring you joy that will last a lifetime. Well, maybe I'll check out a Yelp review first, and then I'll get back to you. But just give it a chance. You won't regret it. You'll be glad that you did. I'll think about it. Me too. After I check you. Sounds good. I'm going to go and start packing. I can't wait to hike the holy way again. The views are breathtaking. When I was growing up, my family never went camping, despite my mom having been the director of a campfire girls group at one time. My dad grew up on a farm, and even though he was one year the president of the Iowa Future Farmers of America, he changed somewhere along the way and decided the best outdoor activity for him and what he wanted to do outside was to sit on the patio and drink a martini. 
Camping is a popular activity with many people here in beautiful Wisconsin. Many of you, I know, go up north in the summer or even in the winter to relax and recharge. Some of you hunt or fish, some of you hike, and some stay in cabins, some in tents, and some of you are like my dad and you do none of those things. Each summer, we bring our seventh grade confirmation students to Pine Lake, one of our awesome ELCA camps. This can be a scary and challenging week for them, but it's a time that I always see them bloom in new and beautiful ways. Shy kids come out of their shells. I see gears turning in their minds as they're immersed in a faith community and we do amazing Bible studies every day. They make new friends, they conquer their fears, and they come home singing new songs of praise that they learned in the camp worships. One of the most difficult but rewarding parts of camp at Pine Lake is the night that each cabin group, which is about nine kids and one cabin leader, goes out to the back 40 acres of camp to do camp out. For camp out, they cook dinner over a fire with their cabin group, and much to the horror of many of our students, they sleep on the ground in a tent. It is way outside of many people's comfort zones. But the reason that we do this at camp is to give the kids a time away from distraction and a time to focus on their relationship with God and with their fellow campers. Because when we are going through a challenge and when we take time away from all the outside noise to focus on God, we can hear God better and we know God better. It's a gift to us that the wilderness provides. My first wilderness experience since I was never taken camping by my family was at church camp myself when I was about eight or nine years old. It was at the Lutheran Outdoor Ministries Center in Oregon, Illinois. And I was so excited. I was certain that I had inherited my mom's genes for adventure in the outdoors. And while I think I did, I loved the hiking, I loved sitting in the grass for Bible study and gathering around the campfire at night, I found a fear and a place of wilderness in a different way. I was so homesick. I missed all that was familiar to me. I felt very alone, but I found a lot of comfort in my faith in knowing that God was there with me and that the love of God would bring me through, through my own connection with God and through the care of my counselors and camp community. We usually think of the wilderness as a scary and frightening place, as we heard in the skit. We worry about bears, about wolves, about other beasts or snakes that might be lurking there. We worry about getting lost out in the wilderness. How will we survive? But the wilderness can be a beautiful place, a hopeful place, where God meets us and God leads us. In our first week of Wilderness Wednesdays, we heard about how God led the Israelites through the desert, through the wilderness, and how God gave them manna every day. Remember, what is it is the translation of manna. We might not really understand what God is doing, in the wilderness, but we know that God will be there to meet us there and to care for us and provide for us. And last week, we heard about how God met Hagar not once, but twice in the wilderness. When Hagar was in fear for her life and the life of her child, God saw her and God heard her. In today's reading, we hear about the hope that God brings into the wilderness of the desert. Even deserts have times of blossoming and beauty. Like a stream rushing over a dry creek bed, God's glory and saving power come to us there. Our reading said, Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. 
Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Several years ago, I went to Arizona for the first time. And if you've been there too, you've probably noticed they have these road signs in the desert that warn you about flash floods. It was a little jarring at first because it's hard to imagine so much water there. The dryness of the air, just breathing it in, was palpable. And all I saw around me was dirt and sand and cacti. But when it rains there, the water gushes, sometimes dangerously, over the dirt. The flowers bloom, and the desert landscape is totally transformed. And God does the same for us, too. God's love, God's presence, God's justice come rushing down on us and on our world. As the prophet Amos said, let justice roll down like waters righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In this passage, God has been talking about how the rich are taking advantage of the poor, cheating them and using their wealth only for themselves. God said he's not interested in their worship until they change their ways and treat others, especially the poor and most vulnerable, the way that God has laid out for them, fairly and with love. Sometimes the wilderness is one that we might create for ourselves out of our own sin and greed. And the wilderness of our neighbor can be a completely different experience than our own wilderness. This is all to say that the wilderness doesn't have to be a physical place. It can be a place inside us. When we feel uncertainty, when we feel lost, that can be wilderness too. But whether our wilderness is a physical place or an emotional state or the result of systems of sin and injustice, God can create something new and beautiful there. God can open the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf. And this can be a metaphor for us all. We all need to see and hear God more and hear him more clearly. God can bring hope and joy and beauty out of our fear, and out of our sin. God strengthens the weak. God gives a backbone to those who have trouble standing up. In the wilderness, God meets us and changes us. We are made stronger and more joyful when we meet God in the wilderness. It's a profound gift to be transformed by God through the challenges of our life and to know that our God will meet us there and to care for us and show us the way. So take a moment now to think about a place of wilderness in your life and what God may be transforming it into. And see if you can open your eyes and your ears a little more to hear and to see God right beside you in that wilderness. Amen. Jesus, the chosen one of God, Messiah.
Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and 